and can be because you have a variety of sources. The people that are left and right of you, I know, are well-intended, uh, uh, yet at the same time, they work for you. And, and, and at the end of the day, you work for the people of Alberta, not for the Premier of Alberta, even though he selects and appoints you, but ultimately you work for the people of Alberta. And so my questions tonight are really are, are, are aimed at uh, that grassroots, people that I've talked to. Uh, I, I guess in many ways you actually are kind of still my boss because I teach at the University of Alberta uh, in intercession in the evening time. But that being the case, uh, I would like to uh, offer a couple of things. Uh, first of all, and, and I'd like to just go to bullets, and, and this is information that, uh, that uh, a variety of our stakeholders have given me, and I thought it was just very insightful based on the fact that they are, they are at the grassroots and they can clearly see firsthand um, what is happening and recommendations that uh, they believe are so important. Now, I know, Dr. Taff, I, I was uh, watching intently with my three-year-old son. Uh, we were watching you uh, ask questions earlier, so I, I will try not to be repetitive of questions. And I know you did ask some uh, postdoctoral fellowship uh, information that I thought was so important. And I actually see in the gallery some people that are, are very keenly interested in this tonight. And, and good for them. It shows how important it is that uh, they are interested. And, and so just be aware they're behind your back as I ask these questions today. And, and so there's a couple of things they did, and a couple of small suggestions. You may be, not be aware, but uh, they thought it would be important that, uh, that in fact, uh, two graduate students perhaps be nominated uh, when it comes to governance boards. I, I think that's a worthy uh, uh, suggestion to, uh, to consider, and having been as a, a member of Cabinet for over eight years, uh, when I was on that side of the house, I, I think it's a good invest in, uh, investment to, uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to consider. I also believe uh, I really like the suggestion about the idea that, uh, you know, today, as you know, graduate students making, you know, for part-time uh, graduate students making less than 14000 uh, for up to eight or 15000 to supplement the federal interest-bearing program, that the program be interest-free during a student's period of study, just makes so much good sense. I mean, I, we can learn something from other governing bodies that are doing that. Uh, I think that is not uh, cumbersome. I think it's a wonderful recommendation and, and certainly would welcome your comments. And there, the, the final th uh, three or items of recommendations were, uh, it has been my understanding that uh, the immigrant nomination program, uh, the requirements for a permanent full-time job offer uh, at the time of application and the requirement uh, for prior work experience, any, any of which it uh, talks about, could deter otherwise qualified candidates from remaining in Alberta. As uh, was mentioned earlier, we want the, this investment that we have with our, with our students, graduate students, we want them to stay. Uh, uh, we, we clearly want them to stay. We want, you know, uh, with some of the students, uh, I'm optimistic someday in the research and the labs that they're at, that they're going to somehow they find a cure for whatever interest, be it in medicine or whatever, that can find a cure for cancer. And so when a, a person says, well, why should I have to pay? I don't have any kids going to school. Well, the reason is, is because they're going to solve a problem that could help someone later on in life. And, and, and so consequently, I, I often say that this is not just an expense, this is truly uh, an investment. And, and I think the first, uh, doctor, uh, the, my honourable uh, colleague mentioned earlier about increasing the number of provincially funded postdoctoral fellowships. Uh, and in fact, I'm embarrassed to say that today, like literally postdoctoral, in terms of they, they may not qualify for even essential health care in terms of their families, you know, they've probably put in anywhere between eight to ten years of work and, and they are there. And so how do we how do we ensure that they are enticed to stay? And and therefore universities, we really need to put them into a category that they're not half employees or not half employees. They are, you know, are you in research or are you not? How do we capture that? And and that's the challenge of your ministry. And, and I'd be eager to hear how you can capture, and in and, 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 and all due respect, and, and I know this minister is one of the few who does not have the rhetoric that, uh, that others have of, of your other side. And, and my other final note is, in saving dollars, uh, would you be willing also to take over the Ministry of Education? 
Okay, and we'll call that, uh, and, and that's not a postdoctoral, but it's often said that actually, and perhaps if we had po uh, postdoctoral uh, fellows uh, being in, in the earlier years in life with their, with their brilliance and intelligence, who knows uh, what outcomes we could have. Um, uh, and so uh, that's also one, somewhat of a, mischie a mischievous question, since that question really ha can only be answered by the President of the Executive Council, called the Premier, so you may want to be cautious on how you answer that uh, on that one. But uh, having said that, uh, I'd be welcome on those four points of those recommendations. Seven and a half minutes. Uh, Minister, you've got seven and a half minutes, and then remaining will split. Thank you. Well, seven and a half. I mean, if he finishes within three, he's a quick talker. Yeah, I can't that's right. Four. I'll try to be quick so we can get as many questions Thank as you. we can. Uh, and, and just for, to your first comment, you know, I, I agree. I have a great deal of respect for the member's office, and especially those that have committed so many years to public service. And I know uh, sir, working in this, in this room and in many others and in city council and county council chambers across this province, a lot of dedicated people, and I have a great deal of respect for all of them. Uh, I, I have talked to the students uh, about representation, and board representation is an interesting thing. And I think probably as or more important than just board involvement is getting the students involved at many levels of, of, of input at the, at the uh, university, college, and, and uh, tech institutes. Uh, and that can be in finance committees. That can be in a whole host of different areas where decisions are made, where we're doing the important business. Uh, the, the Board of Governors is uh, a, a, a rather large group and can be somewhat cumbersome, and, it re and there are representatives from alumni, there's representatives from uh, the faculty, there's representatives from the students, and most of our universities, at least, colleges tend to have one student rep, but many of our universities have three. They'll have two undergrad and one uh, a graduate student on, on uh, their, uh, their uh, groups already. Uh, but faculty uh, usually have a member, uh, and, and so we could, we could start to have two and three representatives from all of those groups, but I believe our boards would become somewhat cumbersome. But I think the real question is how do we make sure that, that our students are involved in all of the decision-making areas that are, that, are, that are happening, that they're involved in budgets when they're being made, that they're, they're involved uh, with those other decisions that maybe impact their lives as much as anything else. So, so we're going to continue to work with our students. We want them involved. Uh, the one thing we have said to the students, I have an open door. I talk to the students. I'm prepared to meet with them. I believe it's critically important that they know that they can come if they have a concern or an issue. And I have uh, never turned down a meeting with our students, and I will continue to meet with them because I think they're such a critical uh, partner in this. Uh, and let's face it, they're helping to pay uh, for the costs of our post-secondary. So they are an absolutely critical piece of this. Uh, the, the nominee program, although not... Uh, directly in our ministry, it does impact all of us. And I agree with you. We are lobbying the federal government to increase the number of nominees we can keep. The self-nominating program now is a, really an interesting one. It's a program now where someone can self-nominate. It doesn't require an employer to nominate them. And this is going to open up some opportunities for people that want to stay in Alberta to self-nominate uh, and stay here. We believe this may be a critical opportunity to help keep some of these skilled and talented people here. It's fairly new. Uh, it's only been in place for a, a few short weeks, but it is a change in that program that we believe uh, will, will help with some of that. And, and you brought up a real interesting idea about postdocs, and you know, I, I think you might have uh, struck on something. If we could get some of our postdocs and grad students into our education system, and into our schools, what wonderful role models they could be. Uh, when our students in grade six or seven are studying science and get to meet a postdoc that's, that's maybe doing research in, in brain chemistry or in neuroscience or in, uh, in, uh, uh, in nanotechnology or, or uh, agricultural research or genomics, you know, what an exciting time for our young people to see the potential f that, what, that an education can give you, the opportunities that it can create out there if you go to school. It can, I think there's a lot of our young people in grades 9, 10, and 11 that have no idea what they'd like to do. And if they met some of these young folks up here, it might create a whole new opportunity, a whole new world for them to see what they could do. So uh, the member over there might have struck on a very, very good idea uh, of looking for opportunities to bring those wonderful role models, these bright, talented people into our uh, education system. Uh, it's a pleasure working with our education uh, department. We have a minister of education so dedicated to our young people and, and, and students. And, you know, we work together 
And there are programs that we're starting to look at delivering uh, at the high school uh, uh, level, starting to create uh, opportunities where high school students can come out of high school with some uh, college-level coursework being completed, or those kinds of things. We've got some pilot projects happening. The partnerships that we have uh, working together between employment and immigration uh, and our department and education. And if you look at some of the older worker initiatives where we want to look to retrain older workers, uh, these are critically important things as, as many of our older workers look to retrain and stay in the workforce. So, so uh, we're going to continue to look for those opportunities. And I think that our graduate students have uh, come up with some very unique ideas. And although you didn't bring it up, we talked, uh, uh, or at least I don't remember, they talked about the part-time student loan issue. I, maybe you did mention it quickly. You know what? We're going to have a real good look at that because... Uh, we believe that this may be a real good way to help uh, attract and keep uh, graduate students here in Alberta. So that truly is a, a great idea.